Growing up on the far north coast of California, my younger years as a budding bow hunter were relegated to the relatively unknown and underappreciated black-tailed deer. I can remember the exact day when my aspirations changed and a mule deer hunter was born. How to hunt mule deer in open country. Featuring Larry D. Jones, Neil Summers, and Dave Dorn. We're going to join these hunters in the high country. In 1987, I'd graduated from high school and moved south to start my life as an adult. Naturally, the first thing I did was to seek out the local archery shop. When I stepped through the door, Larry D. Jones' new Mule Deer video was playing. I was riveted. I immediately bought a copy and wore that VHS tape out. The following year, I successfully hunted Mule Deer for the first time, and since, they have become my most beloved animal to hunt. Larry's using the three-point stock here. It's a good way to move quietly. Since you're steadier, you can ease your feet down softly and with control. Here he's using what he calls the four-point stock. This works great on steep hillsides where you need to creep down slowly with plenty of control. Not only did his video provide inspiration, but more importantly, Larry shared his knowledge with the viewer and taught me many of the skills I would later use to become a successful mule deer hunter over the next three plus decades. Thirty-one years later, I would have the opportunity to hunt mule deer with the man who inspired me so many years before. Somebody, one of these days, when you come in here, and I'm not here, you're going to have a nice flat spot to put your bag down. Yep. I'll say, I'm going to take Jones's bed. Yep. He ain't here. He's dead. <laughs> well, it sure is inspiring seeing you up here, and... I've been backpack hunting for 32 years and you know you kind of at some point it's like dang knocking on 50 store and you feel like you got the best years behind you but I think you know I know I mean physically maybe I'm not what I was 20 years ago but I know a heck of a lot more.
Oh yeah. So, you know, I can still get around just fine. Might not get there as fast, but. Yeah, same here. Quite the kitchen here, don't I? Here's my breakfast, all ready for me. Spaghetti, I have spaghetti, sour cream, sweet and sour pork, chicken dumplings, beef stroganoff, beef stew. It's quite a decision. My wife's not here, so how am I going to figure this out? <laughs> low. Good line, but way low. I'm going to have to do some stumping. Yeah, we need a stump. Yeah. Still a little low. Better, but... How many times does a country kid get an opportunity to share their passion with one of their mentors? This was truly my version of being on the court with Michael Jordan during a playoff game. I wasn't just there as a spectator, but we were both there to continue to learn and help each other be successful. It's inspiring to see someone in their mid-70s with the level of enthusiasm and physical abilities that Larry still possesses. It is a good lesson that as we all age, taking care of your body in a positive mindset will add decades to the time you can spend roaming in the mountains and pursuing the game that we love. With daylight fading, we glassed up several bucks. Anticipation ran high for both of us as we retreated to our tents to wait out the longest night of the year, the night preceding opening day. This is a grim start to opening day. I've seen 10 does, two small two points, and a spike. And if there's anywhere on this mountain that I thought I could take somebody and show them 30 bucks in a the morning, it would be here. 
So I'm not sure. This is a super dry year and uh, the grass is, what feed there is, is, is uh, really small and stunted and brown. So um, either the deer aren't in here because of poor feed or maybe there's some kind of disturbance that we're not aware of. Maybe a couple of lions are in here working this basin um, or maybe there's a rock concert in here a couple days ago that we weren't aware of, but whatever it is, it's not looking too promising this morning. So we're gonna pull up, I think, and go check out some other spots here um, down the ridge a little further and then into the next canyon and see if we can't turn something up. <laughs> triangular shaped strip of trees I've stalked them in quite a few times okay. and it's a really good bedding area over in there so we'll give it a little bit and then uh, we'll peel up the ridge here and then kind of just poke our head around the corner and see if we can yeah. find them there. We'll probably go back this way a little ways and up huh? yeah it, we don't we don't need to go too far yeah. but yeah just to be safe yeah but they aren't called mule deer for now <laughs> giant ears yeah they can hear man no doubt
<laughs> Did you see that? Yeah. I tell you what, I I thought I blew it for you because uh -huh. I seen your pack and stuff up there. You know, right, I right. And so I, I got a little while and I started down this way, and there's a buck, and he, you know, he came run back up this way, and I dropped down. He slowed down. So, Pretty quick, he started running back towards me. I said, what? <laughs> then he started staggering around. Unbelievable. I thought, South, just <laughs> shot that buck. <laughs> right after I shot him, and I was watching him run, I caught movement out of the corner of my eye, and I see you up there on the ridge, and I was like, I can't believe that. I just shot one right in front of you, man. <laughs> yeah. oh, I watched him go down. I seen him go down, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. that's sweet. Yeah. This was such a, such a, a close to a total debacle. We were coming down the ridge, and I spotted him. Same general area as those two were down yesterday. yesterday. And these, uh -huh. this was a different buck. Uh -huh. But uh, he started working his way up towards the ridge, and there's a saddle right over here yeah and so Nick and I dropped off the back side of the ridge and hustled it all the way around Nick posted up on a rock and actually we both got up on the rock until we saw that it looked like he was committed to going through that saddle and then I hustled down to the saddle set up there and uh, I'm down there for I don't know five minutes and and all of a sudden here I will tick behind me and I look up the hill and Nick had thrown a rock down there to get my attention he's like <laughs> the buck had changed course and was coming up this way, so I had to run like a hundred yards back up on top here. And he's like, he's, he's right behind that tree. And unfortunately, the, in the position Nick was at, he couldn't run the camera because right. it was in the way and there was just too much commotion. So I had, luckily I had my GoPro, so I turned that thing on and uh, I just saw antlers come right up over the top like this. <laughs> and the higher he came, the lower I sank. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he was about 40 yards from me and he came right into, he was probably 25 yards. Mm -hmm. And I had my bow up, already had an arrow on there, I had tension on the string and he's looking at me and then he's looking over in the direction that Nick was at and he's looking back at me and he takes a couple more steps and I was like, like, okay, if he moves again, man, I'm just gonna go ahead and, and try. Mm -hmm. And because I knew it was like this only so long this is <laughs> yeah, gonna last. Right. And by then, man, my arm was like a like a noodle from holding my bow. And I started drawing like this and I hit a darn sagebrush. And so I couldn't get the full draw. Plus my bow felt like it was about 70 pounds <laughs> yeah, after yeah, holding yeah. it for so long. So I got to as far as I could and I shot and I heard this thwop. So I was like, okay, I hit him good. And then he ran out and then when he when he was running, I saw a blood spot on him, uh -huh. and it looked like it was in a good position. Then he turned, um, and then I saw the exit on the other side, and I was like, "Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. that's funny." <laughs> yeah. And then I kind of saw him going like yeah. this, and then that's when I saw you, and I was <laughs> like, "All right, that was so cool." Uh, yeah, and, right over there, you yeah. see these antlers in the sage. <laughs> yeah, well, let's go get them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, whew, what a deal. Well, a little change of luck here. I. Uh, tripped over my shaft, I didn't see it in the grass, caught it with my right foot, drove it through my boot and into my back of my ankle here. Luckily I didn't catch an artery, but uh, whew, man, that'll make you sick. Hi, hi, hi. I'm gonna lay down for a little bit while we haven't gone to, have to, to recover the buck yet. Man, oh man. Yeah, had I been in socks when that happened? Whew. No bueno. Hey, I got my broadhead back though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this would probably be as good as bandage as any. Yeah. Probably stay on better. Yeah, he didn't go too far. Man, look at that guy. He's got big old backs on him. Nice buck. Holy smokes. Yeah, I hit him perfect too right there. <laughs> yeah. Check that oh, out. Oh, right through the heart. Yeah. Oh, that's a dandy. Look at him. Beautiful, beautiful. All right. Selvin, nice. <laughs> I'd have taken a buck half this size and been just as happy. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've been blessed, man. Holy cow. And look at that. Not a nick in his velvet. It is perfect. Yeah. Really something. Wow. I'm going to get some photographs. Oh, yeah, for sure. Wow. That's pretty good. One, two, three. Such a surreal moment the ultimate coming to fruition of life's passions and dreams. Some 30 years ago, with a $15 VHS tape, Larry changed the life direction of a teenage kid, kindling a love for a species previously only seen in pictures, and fanning the flames for the mountains of the West. Now, all these years later, being congratulated by the one who planted the seed was inspiring beyond words. 
I only hope that through my years I can provide similar inspiration and make impactful change for some other teenage kid. In the end, everything comes full circle.